America is in a war for its soul. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. America became a battleground long ago with a dangerous kind of internationalist seeking to destroy her soul. That war has entered its end stage with the infiltration of nearly all of America's institutions by her spiritual enemies. Now Americans face a choice to recognize American exceptionalism and greatness or consign themselves to slavery under internationalist rule. And the rest of humanity must make their own decisions between sovereignty and non-entity. Before I lay my case out, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good, great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I've chosen for today which reads, Freedom Isn't Free. And how true that is. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click there and leave me a tip. Any currency will do so long as it's legal tender. Now then, the United States of America is the product of centuries of development, imagination, and fidelity to a common theme. And true enough, not even all the original 13 states began as English colonies. New York began as New Netherland, and the British spun off New Jersey from New York after acquiring it. But faithful Christians founded the first colonies in each of the three original regions. That includes the Captain John Smith Expedition, Virginia, the Pilgrims and Puritans, Massachusetts, and William Penn, Pennsylvania. The influence of these three groups of founders affected all the rest. This applied also to higher education. The first colleges in what became the United States were all religious colleges. That included especially Harvard, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Yale, New Haven, Connecticut. This also applied to the College of William and Mary in Virginia, after that glorious revolution that installed those two as King and Queen of England. But in the 19th century, a threat appeared that few appreciated at the time. The threat came from a dangerous philosophy that denies God and proposes bondage of all to all. Of the two rival proponents of this philosophy, Karl Marx proposed the obvious threat. He proposed the violent overthrow of government and economy by workers as a class. Antonio Gramsci had a more subtle plan, as subtle as the original snake in the Garden of Eden. You can read all about him in Genesis chapter 3. He proposed subverting a country's institutions and taking it over from within. Neither man lived to see the fruition of his ideas, but Karl Marx's spiritual disciples, the Bolsheviks, did bring about their violent revolution in Russia. That experiment lasted for more than 70 years before at last collapsing of its own weight. During that time, at least two of Lenin's successors behaved in a manner that made the threat too obvious. Leon Trotsky explicitly sought to export the communist revolution worldwide, but a paranoiac man named Yosef Vissarionovich Zhugashvili, who took the name Stalin, which literally means steel in Russian, outmaneuvered him, exiled him, and then sent a squad to um, make sure he would never again get in the way. Thereafter, Russia concentrated on defense. Stalin was brutal but not quite an empire builder. But when he died, his successor Nikita Khrushchev did try to build a world empire. 
bringing, bringing in a shoe to bang on the table of the Security Council, saying we will bury the American system, let's look at 1970 to see who was right, and especially missiles in Cuba. It was all about empire building. As such, he provoked fear and loathing in America far more than Stalin did. That is, until the Central Committee removed him. Gramsci's successors have had better success. They have infiltrated our institutions. So that today, America is balancing on a knife edge. The institutions, uh, institutional infiltration has moved to the point at which the infiltrators feel bold enough to strike. The universities are among the worst because they are supposed to train the country's leaders, but to them the very name of America is a name they wish never to hear spoken. Stanford University, for example, has published a glossary of harmful language for its students. They instruct students never to refer to an American as an American. Use the term United States citizen instead, they insist, as if anyone ever had any confusion on this point. I have that from, the cons from conservative news and views, who got it from the Daily Mail. But the infiltration extends also to the middle and elementary schools. Gravsky introduced the concept critical theory, and his successors have incorporated this into school curricula. These schools, frankly, teach their pupils to hate their own bodies, hence gender-affirming care, often without parental consent or even parental notice. They also teach them to hate one another along racial or gender lines. But how is that going to work out if they make gender totally fluid? They won't say. I think they messed up there. Or maybe the idea is just to win and sort it out later. And finally, they encourage pupils to hate America and to think of God as non-existent. The church has not escaped either. The notion that Jesus is a socialist crept into the church long ago. But worse was the deliberate discouragement of Christians to do anything political at all, and also to let the government handle, the, handle most charity, a forced charity through taxation. Nor have the infiltrators stopped there. They had to seize the media, or else good adversarial journalists would take alarm and expose them. So the media at least the legacy media, are perfectly copacetic with all these trends. An alternative media sprang up with the invention of the World Wide Web. The invention of social media gave the best hope that anyone could be a journalist with minimal equipment. But the infiltrators, having seized the American intelligence community, moved to tame the social media also. The Twitter files Describe this, one recent installment hinting at the scope of the problem, which is larger than Twitter or one agency. At first, the legacy media ignored or tried to spike that story, and when that failed, they actually tried to deny it. Leighton Woodhouse details this and cites the Cable News Network as a booby prize example. I have a link in the description to his tweet announcing his article and to the CNN video segment saying that Elon Musk got it wrong. Actually, he didn't. Because though the FBI never gave a direct order that would have said failure to comply will have this and thus and such consequences, remember that the FBI, the CIA, and other agencies salted Twitter and Facebook and the rest with their agents, who simply got off the agency payroll and onto the Twitter payroll or other payroll. And if you think that makes any difference, trust me, it doesn't. Of course, what CNN won't admit is that they are completely copacetic with it. They marched straight down the line with a tame version of events that paralleled completely the sanitized news that was all one can find on Twitter and other conventional social media. More recently, alternative media too has sprung up, generally with closely held ownership and sometimes with fully independent infrastructure. Elon Musk's buyout of Twitter, taking it private to boot, has the infiltrators fearing total disaster. What does all this matter? Before I answer, I want to shout out to a prime uh, to another sponsor 
who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me, many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Now, whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, to answer the question I mentioned earlier, just remember that you can infer what sort of America the internationalists want just by looking at various university and political programs and policies. In fact, they don't want America to exist at all, so let us imagine a world without it. First, the United States of America as we know it will simply cease to exist. A new ecological movement called rewilding will produce a North America called Aslan, that's A-Z-T-L-A with, a, a with an upside accent N, that will look vaguely like the modified Jesus Land map, except that instead of Jesus Land, this continent of Aslan will feature protected wild space, a region literally restored to the status quo ante any human habitation. Everything outside this space, including the West Coast, the Northern East Coast, and the Great Lakes region, would be a thoroughly woke society. It would not even call itself America or American, but something to evoke indigenous people. New Aztlan. And just what would that mean? It would mean the new Aztec Empire. And in that society, not only would gender be fluid, but only those who had transitioned would be considered cool. Society who would look down on cisgendered straight people, calling them breeders. You will readily see that this will encourage the people to depopulate themselves by attrition. Alaska would merge with what is now literally called Inuit Nunangat, literally the abode of the Inuit. That consists of the former Northwest Territories of Canada. It, too, would go wild. No air travel would be allowed anymore. Remember Rep Representativa Alejandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York saying we need to build out high-speed reed rail to the extent that would make air travel unnecessary? Here's how. A Hyperloop-based railway line would connect Rio de Janeiro to Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam along a great circle course. Branches would reach out to other cities like Buenos Aires, Le Havre in France, New Delhi in India, wherever. Hawaii would become an indigenous-only kingdom. The all Haoles, meaning whites, would be evacuated by force, and the internationalists would then rewild the islands. And maybe Senator Maisie Hirano of Hawaii would go back and become Queen Maisie of a new House of Hirano. Not exactly the House of Kamehameha, but it would do, I suppose. Well, fellow Americans, it's up to you. Are you going to let this happen? Doesn't have to. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson of Texas once stopped the ratification of a United Nations treaty that would have produced something like protected wild space. Dr. Michael S. Kaufman projected on a U.S. map the consequences of that and other treaties. I have a link in the description to his famous map, the Agenda 21 map, or maybe that should be the Agenda 2030 map. The Senate listened and did not muster the two-thirds to ratify the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. Senator Hutchinson is gone. 
Now, are the two present senators from Texas made of similar stern stuff? I wonder. For four years, Donald J. Trump gave Americans a taste, not only of freedom, but of American greatness. The internationalists made sure, even if only by the machinations the Twitter files reveal, to prevent his re-election. They have now grown bolder, changing elections in key states beyond all recognition. I laid all this out to you to show you the stakes. America stands between the internationalists and their goal of a world without America, under their dictatorship. Only American patriots can make sure that our country will remain standing. Link in the description of the article to Leighton Woodhouse tweet, to that CNN video, to the Kaufman or Agenda 21 map, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and OurSilverLines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel. And links to my Twitter Files playlist, to that CNN video so you can see what I'm talking about, and to my first great sortation video that will tell you all about the Jesus land map and its later versions. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.